Hello, my name is Daniela. Thank you for joining me. Today, I would like to talk to you about lucid dreaming. What is it and um, how to do it? I like the easy way. So lucid dreaming is when you are aware that you're actually dreaming. You understand that you're in a dream state. And it's, I find it very, very valuable, super cool, but valuable. And as we go into it, we'll, I'll explain. So it's being aware that you're actually not awake. And you can train your brain um, where you can do this freely at will, or at least get good at it, right? It may not work 100% of the time, but you're able to do this. And this is something I've been able to do since I was a child. Um, I always had, often, I had a lot of nightmares. I was tormented in my sleep. And so I would try to steer as I was going to sleep in a certain way, not knowing that this was lucid dreaming. So anyway, um, so you can control your brain to become familiar with lucid dreaming by practicing, right? Anything that we practice, we get better at, right? All right. So number one, you want to make your bedroom as comfortable as possible. And a lot of people don't invest money in their um, bed. Like that's a, a big thing, the bed, right? The bed has to be comfortable because if the, the bed's too hot or too soft, the room is too hot, it's too bright, the pillows aren't comfortable, you're unable to fall asleep. If you're unable to fall asleep, you're not going to lose a dream. So it's pretty logical. I love my bedroom to be like a safe haven, right? I even the colors that you choose and everything for the walls, for the sheets. I just think it should be very conducive to very um, to drifting off. I've I've struggled with sleep, so that's why I think about the bedroom more than probably most people. Okay, the second thing for me, it's um, incredibly important. I set the intention that I am going to head this direction. It's almost like getting behind the wheel of your car. You want um, to go to a particular destination. So I know after um, my parents passed, I purposely wanted to steer in that direction. But there are other things that, okay, say if you want to work out a problem, that's another way to go. So my intention is just like, okay, this is where I want to go. This is how I did it as a kid. Like I just keep thinking about um, a person or a situation that I want to go do. Okay, so set the intention. This is, I learned later. Um, sorry about the back and forth with the glasses. Another thing that I learned, I don't know, a couple, two, three years ago was as I'm in bed, I repeat this phrase. Thank you that I have many dreams. Thank you that I have lucid dreams. Thank you that I remember my dreams. So I say this over and over again on top of a destination. My intention is to lucid dream and to remember them. So thank you that I have many dreams. Thank you that I have lucid dreams. Thank you that I remember my dreams. So I found that to be incredibly helpful. Um, what else? Very, very um, important or helpful. I was even told when I um, received readings from other people, when family members would come through, they were like, you're losing a lot of the lessons because we learned when we're in that stage of dementia, right? And it was very important, vital for me to start keeping a dream journal. And it's a dedicated book. Mine's, I love mine. I should have put it over here. It's a little pink one since like um, sweet dreams. So I like to have my dream journal right on the bedside table in the first drawer with a pen because if you just have the book, no good. The other thing that I like to do is have a soft like um, Himalayan lamp or where you could dim it because you don't want to become fully awake. That defeats the purpose too. Or um, a selenite. I also have a selenite lamp like um, beautiful crystal and I dim it. So this way, when you know it's important that, you know what, this is a lesson or this is information I need to recall, you can write it down. The other thing that I've done in the past when I got sloppy and didn't have that material near me, I will um, speak into my phone and record it. So um, talk to text didn't work out so well because of the New York accent. But when I record it, it does work out. What else do I want to bring up? Reality check. Okay. 
Some people will tell you to squish your fingers. Like it's just a sensation I guess you're familiar with. Another thing I came across was like seeing if you could push your in, um, index finger through the palm of your hand because I guess in a dream you can. I never did anything like that. Like I said, this was a more natural thing for me. When I, one of the um, things that was crystal clear when I knew for a fact beyond a shadow of a doubt I was lucid dreaming, my friend was a firefighter in 9-11 and he passed away. And shortly after his death, he came to me and I was with a friend of mine going up the elevator and honest to God, I didn't think we were going to make it right to get out on the floor. And when we did, um, there was only one person present and it was my friend that was a firefighter that passed away. And I was so curious because I knew he was dead and I was like, I wanted to touch him to see what it felt like to touch somebody that doesn't have a body. And I was really surprised because I felt so safe with him. He was the first person ever that was in spirit form that I touched since then I have, but that I touched. And um, then I turned to my girlfriend that was still alive and touched her and they felt the same. But I just realized right now that I, I made the conscious act to, it was like a scientific test for me. And it was really cool because I'm like, in your dreams, it's like you float down the river. You, you can't direct where you dream, like what's happening, what you're doing in your dreams. And that, like I said, this is something that's natural for me that I've always been able to do it, just didn't know what it was. And as I was doing this, I was guided that, no, that's not true, Tommy. It's not the first person you touched because my parents had passed away before that. I just, it was so natural for me to hug them and feel them that I didn't realize, you know, like, oh yeah, they're solid, even though I knew that they passed over. But it still was a really awesome test. Um, some of the things say, look at your hands or your feet because um, it looks elongated. It doesn't look normal as when you're awake in all reality. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, I love this one. And this is true. Um, Everybody, we, we lose it. It occurs during REM, okay? For me, um, like, I don't know, anywhere from 5 to 7 in the morning is my deepest sleep. And when I keep, when I wake up from the alarm, uh, actually, yeah, a very young teenager taught me this, keep hitting snooze and it, like, jump starts you right into lucid dreaming. And because it, it's a deepest sleep, and you just boom, boom, keep getting right back, bounce back in when you use the alarm with snooze. Um, I have found that incredibly effective. You go right back in. The other thing, what else did people remember that? Okay. To purposely go in, like I said, I remember also when I would have a particular work problem or situation with people, because our mind is so open at that point, creative, that solutions come. So that's another thing to have the intention. You go to sleep with thinking about that particular work situation or that fam uh, relationship issue that you're having. And you keep wanting to like work it out when that's your intention. We do come up with solutions. As you wake up, that's why the dream journal is good because a lot of information comes through and you're recording it. Okay. It's not just amazing with creativity. What I, It's very helpful to also go back in your dream journals to see what information has been revealed over the years. And what was interesting to me one time, I had gone back a couple of years and I saw that through my dreams, things that I was not aware of while I was awake, I was um, given information about situations and things like that that were actually accurate. So let me just see if there's anything else. What is this? Oh, okay. Dream signs to help you be aware that you're sleeping, that it's a dream. They say with your dream journal, like as you're writing this down, if Aunt May or Mary is always showing up in your dreams, that's going to be one of your cues that you're in a dream. Or if it's always, I don't know, you're bike riding or you're always um, at a family dinner, whatever it is, the same thing constantly happens in your dreams. There's a repeating pattern. 
once you read that, like, you, oh, wow, again, this is a scenario, same scenario, same scenario. What happens because you're conscious of it at that point, then when you see it in your dreams, you're going to know that you're sleeping. Um, yeah, because, I mean, I've purposely done it when I knew I was dreaming, and I'm like, wow, I wonder what it would feel like to fly. And I remember one time flying over London. It was so cool. Um, I wondered, though, if that actually bordered on astral projection because, I don't know, to me it seems very close. Anyway, I hope that this has helped you. Um, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so when I release a video you get the information. And please share this video with others, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you joining me, taking time out of your day. Namaste.